sign on it. It's a lot of shoe. It's just Selwyn Brown. Chancellor of the Spiritual Baptist of Chassis and Pamela Campbell. Canon de Vera Rainwood. Winston Daniel. Canon de Vera Rainwood. Michael Hosta. Our General Secretary, the Reverend Lucy Rogers. The Reverend Dr. Phyllis Ralph Brown. Our Secretary, Reverend Philomena Tibble. All ministers, deacons, and deaconesses of the Spiritual Baptist Archdiocese and other fraternal spiritual Baptist bodies. The Major, the Salvation Army, Major Antwine. The Parliamentary Representative for this constituency, East Kingston, the Honorable Adam Eustace. All brothers and sisters and those of you who are here to mourn the loss of our dear sister, and members of the family. And if by reason I really should have mentioned anyone in my greetings, and I did not mention, take it with no offense. But I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As I arrived in the church this afternoon, the Reverend Betty Free. One of the ministers here at Samuel asked me if I can really take a place this afternoon. By delivering the word of God, I was speechless for a while. Then I realized that I have always promised to answer here by send me. She looked at me again and asked, I was not answering. I, I said I was speechless. I pat her on the shoulder and I said, okay. Here my God is good. And all the time. God is good. And I understand that this service is carried live on radio and also in streaming. So I think I would have omit those who are listening or viewing. Good afternoon to you. It is time for the message of God's Word. Lead me, Lord.
remind us of the words of Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sore? Verse 36 says, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I would like to stand just for a moment. Stand for a moment. Kind and gracious Father, lift ourselves before you. Father, you are the only wise God. Here we are today remembering our sister, our minister, our mother, our friend. But you cannot hear us. So therefore, we thank you for the life and work, but you are about to speak to our hearts. You have decided today to use me, but I'll take myself out of the way and allow you to speak to your people. So whatever you speak through me, I will speak without adding or taking away from your word. As you give me, I will deliver. Thus saith the Lord. I pray to God that you bind our hearts and open our understanding to your word. And let thy word go forth as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. In Jesus' name we pray thanks to you. Amen. 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 What a wonderful afternoon we are experiencing in the presence of the Lord. When you join yourself with Christ, one thing should be on your mind that you will not separate yourself from the love of Christ. But it is a pity. Some come to know Christ as Savior and Lord. And before a month or two, they've gone back to the same things they left. Are you in the church? Yes. To be with Christ is to be Christ alike. Whatever hobby you had before that was contrary to his teaching. When you come to know Christ, it is to give up those things, Amen. let them go, yeah. and serve Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christ is no playmate with us. He said, I am the Lord thy God, I'm a jealous God. So Paul, realizing the suffering he went through. Remember, before that, he was on his way to Damascus, persecuting the children of God. But I say to all of us today, when you are chosen by the Lord, you are well chosen. Amen. Not by man. If man is going to make the choice, it will be in vain because you will fail. You have to be chosen by God. Our sister recognized that in her earthly pilgrimage, that one day she will leave this world. And I think I heard it a few times this afternoon. She is in a better place. Is that so? Amen. It is a pity that we all acknowledge when someone dies, they are in a better place. But none of us want to die to go to that better place. 
because life is so sweet. Yes. We are missing so much here. But a Christian should not be afraid to die. Yes. If your life is centered around Christ, whether death come in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the night, you should be ready. The question is, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? You know, this was a very uh, a favorite chapter of my father. And you don't expect me to do this service without mentioning his name. I never conduct a funeral service or preach at a service without you hearing his name or no words my father. Who was my father? Amen. The blessed Cosmo Matthias Paul. A wonderful man. I sat under him many times and listened to him in funeral services preaching this message. And he asks who or sometimes what shall separate us? From the love of Christ. Madam, is it your husband? Because you do not want you to serve God. And he's simply saying, well, if you got to be going to church, then you got to look for somebody else. And he may want to walk out on you. Mr. Is it your wife? You love her so much. But she's not into this Christ thing. Eh? And she can't take you to church every Sunday. And she wants you to be at home with her or go elsewhere. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation sometimes to live a Christian life. If you're not prepared with the faith that God gave you. If you rely on yourself, it is not easy to live a Christian life. But I thank God as a servant of God. I encourage all of you to say, I know that I can make it. Uh-huh. I know persecution, they start to walk out. Yes. But stand up today. Yes. The persecution will come. Yes. But with Jesus you can make it. Yes. It shall not separate you from the love of Christ. Yes. And the Bible says when Jesus had his first message on the mountain of Sinai, 
He said, blessed are ye. Amen. Amen. Men shall revive. Right, right. And persecute you. Yes. And say all the manner of evil against you falsely. Yes. What did he ask you to do? Rejoice. Yes. 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 No. Some of us don't be in like church people in persecution. No. Some of us behave worse than the persecutors. Are we a church people, you know? Yes. Oh, we lift up holy hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When the persecution come, we forget that. But Jesus said, Rejoice! And be exceedingly. People do not have to know something about you to say something about you. Are you hearing me, church? You do not have to do anything bad for somebody to say that you are bad. And sometimes, you know what causes all of that? Hatred. Yes. The Bible warns us about that work of the flesh, hatred. Yes. But will you allow the persecution of this world to take you away from God's kingdom? Well, I tell you the truth. I make my boast in the Lord. Yes. If that was the case, I will not have been here preaching. Yes. But I stand up to my battles. Because they are not mine, they belong to the Lord. And when I claim the victory, I said I claim it in Jesus' name. I mean, sometimes you don't even have anything to eat for the night to go to sleep. Sometimes you struggle. You wonder what is the next me you're going to say. Because one is not speaking. But my people of God, I say to you, pray make the dark and cloud which heart. Will you allow the cares of the world to separate you from the love of Jesus Christ? You know his love. Even while we sin, he still loves us. That is the God we serve. But I heard Paul say, Nay, no, in all these things, we are more than conquer. Tell somebody, I am a conqueror. Tell somebody, and I can suck you now. You don't say it because I say to say it. If you're not a conqueror, close your mouth. Are you hearing me, church? I know I said to say it, but if you're not a conqueror, close your mouth. If you are a conqueror, say to the person next to you.
Christ because you can talk and you're not serious about Christ, just remember he's watching you. We read earlier that there is a place that Jesus got to prepare and I believe it's appropriate to Romans chapter 8. You do not want to be separated from the love of Christ because he has a mansion. A mansion. Imagine that. 
Sometimes we leave St. Vincent and the Grenadines and we say we're going to greener pastures. But some friend or relative send and say, you can come up, there's work up here, or up here's nice. And you know, we get these words. Yeah. We are so excited. Yeah. And sometimes the night, a morning you're the next day you're supposed to leave, you don't sleep the night. Yeah. <laughs> but are you excited about heaven today? Amen. Are you excited about heaven today? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If I die and I miss heaven, my father cannot be blamed. I have to blame myself. Taught me the way to Christ. He led me by example. And today, I carry out his legacy. Once the Lord will be my helper, and I know he will. Amen. But if I miss heaven, I have to blame myself. Amen. Mother Cupid cannot see heaven for her children. No. Not for her siblings. She will see heaven for us. In my father's house are many. And you still want to be separated from the love of Christ? What will you do when the tribulation comes then? Let me say, Pastor, it's not easy, you know. Pastor, it's not easy when this woman starts telling you some things she doesn't know about you. You cannot just listen, Pastor, Pastor. She's going to get the feeling that you're afraid of her. Yeah. But rejoice. Yeah. When persecution comes, when trials come, when tribulation comes, feel good. Stop asking God, why me? Yeah. Huh? It's when God uses you for a purpose. Don't go and ask God why. Why this sickness didn't catch the brother or the sister who don't go to church? A lot of us like to think that, you know. Yes. We go to church every day and watch them. They don't get sick. God, why you don't get why you don't put sickness on them? You want to be in God's place? You see this early pilgrimage? We will enjoy life, but for a time. Yes. No matter how far you reach in life, whether you have your doctorate, your masters, it doesn't matter. The poor man who dropped out of school and just trying to make his way, don't worry. They go to the same place after death. They are buried. Except for those who choose to be cremated. But you don't worry. You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? The rich man feared sumptuously. Didn't care what happened to Lazarus. Lazarus was a poor beggar. The Bible says the rich man died. And Lazarus also died. Lazarus was carried away in the bosom of Abraham. The rich man was taken to hell where he was in torment. Yes. He felt the thirst in hell. And when he felt it, he called Father Abraham send Lazarus to dip his finger in water that he can quench my thirst. But it was. And one of the things I try to avoid is to say to those of you who have never tasted and seen that the Lord is good, to tell you when you try everything and everything fail, try Jesus. I'll tell you, don't even bother trying anything else. They will fail you. 
So even before they, you wait for them to fail you, just stay Jesus. Abraham said, there is a goal fix. I can neither come to you nor you to me. And it's a pity sometimes in our, our last days or when, when it is no more, we find the time to call on God. He said, well, if you cannot come, send Lazarus so he can warn my brethren. He said, you have Moses and the prophets. And well, if they won't hear Moses and the prophet, how will they hear Lazarus? Make use of your opportunity now. Do not allow anything to separate you from the love of God. I believe our sister has fought a good fight. She has kept a great faith. I believe henceforth there's a promenade up for her. What is your decision today? Are you sure that you can say with pride and joy, that I'm going on, right on, that's all I know. Are you sure that you can say, I'm born for a city, that pearly white city, the city that John said, due to Jerusalem I saw as a bride coming down to meet her husband. A city that John said, there will be no crying, there will be no night, there will be no need for light, and there will be no death. Because the former things will pass. It is my prayer today that God will anoint all of us to continue in his ministry. And for us, those of us who are losing that focus, that we will stay focused. We have a better place to go. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. No matter what you own in life, when you die, you will all leave them here. There will be no use for you. Because we are told that only the things that I've done for Christ will last. So while you're trying to get your academics, make sure you have your passport to come. Make sure that your ticket is stamped. And it is stamped with the whole blood of Jesus Christ to the church Reverend Mother Free the congregation say like Paul nothing shall separate from the love of Christ our sister gone and one day we too have to whether we like it or not we have to to the family Hold things. This woman of God, I believe you are confident, like I am, that her soul is at peace with God. Hallelujah. To those of us of the Spiritual Baptist Archdiocese, the Spiritual Baptist Fraternity, the Christian co community, let us be comforted with the words that I am persuaded. And neither dead nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come.